Pre-Cure Theater! In today's episode of Pre-Cure Theater, the part of Marmo will be played by Kat, and the part of Alice and or Cure Rosetta will be played by me! You pathetic child, fear my power, for I, Marmo, have gone beast mode and have taken the form of a rose! Oh dear, that is quite frightful, but I'm afraid, Marmo, that there's something that you don't realize yet. What? I, too, have a beast mode. hi ah! One, two, three, four. Chop, chop, chop. It's cure of the what now? Gather the ingredients. Cure of the what now? Not much time to prep. Before it's time to start the show. Oh! Guests are arriving. Care of the what now? Everybody's smiling. Care of the what now? A tasty party starting. Now it's time to go. Woo! Woo. Served hot and fresh. Eat a ducky moss. Hello, fellow members of famous NFL team, the Seahawks, and welcome to... Cure of the what now? Yum! Episode 26. The one show where we know... Going beast mode is actually trademarked by that one guy, so, uh, doki doki, we're gonna need to talk. (laughs) If anything, he violated copyright laws by incorporating beast mode into his thing. I said for years when, when, when the football nerds who are like, ooh, D&D is too nerdy for me, they were like, yeah, this football guy, he goes into beast mode. My first thought was, you stole that from anime. You know you're trying to be more like anime, right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take your hand, I'm gonna gently help you step down off that soapbox, and we're gonna put it away so we can do the podcast. My name is Kat, and I am a suspiciously hot chicken that has just hatched from an egg. Oh, I see you're using a double entendre because you're a very sexy chicken, <laughs> but then also... <laughs> you thought the chicken was sexy? <laughs> no, you are sexy. You're uh... not... You, you're just, you're, you're, hmm. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the rumor come out, is Joel a chicken furry? There's got to be at least one chicken is furry Is Joel does love his wife? <laughs> the last time I saw Big News Morgans, I had some feelings, is all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. I'm your co-host, Joel, and damn it, you stole mine. Uh, I'm the champion. I can name any of the 100 poems from skilled uh, poeticist, Dead Mao Five. Do one for me. Wow, you're a master. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Joel, do we have any announcements, news, or otherwise beginning of the episode business? I really don't think so. As we'll cover in the succinct summary of the episodes that we watched, next week we will in fact be finishing Max Heart, or at least that's my plan. Life might get in the way, you know how we are. But... If we do finish Max Heart, I personally am not feeling doing a retrospective episode like we did for Sweets. The Sweets special episode was a celebration of how much we enjoyed it. But at this point, I'm only like half paying attention to the episodes. And Catherine, you've missed a few. So like, I don't think it would be worthwhile to talk about it. Maybe if we found a Max Heart super fan, we could have an episode with them on and they can try to convince us of its of its merits. Yeah, we didn't do a retrospective really for Fresh or for Futari Wa or any of the other seasons we've watched. So I think it's a sometimes when we feel like it kind okay. of thing. Um, and we're just not feeling it for Max Heart. Now, when we finish Max Heart, I am going to watch the finale with Joel. I asked him to save the last three episodes for me so I could see how this crazy business all wraps up. There's a, sorry, I, I, not to cut you off, there's an episode specifically when the 12th slash 11th Hardy L shows up because Seacoon was the first, but is the last one to go inside the chair act. And I think that we're going to start watching together at that point. And I think that's episode 45. I think you nailed it when you said the last three, but. Okay, perfect. But uh, other than that, you know, I don't know if we are going to jump straight into Splash Star or if we are just going to finish out Delicious Party with Doki Doki. Sure. And start Splash Star when we start whatever the next season is. Um, Because we might need need a break, you know? Life stealing ninjutsu tend to steal your life. They do tend to steal your life. I've got, like, a lot of studying and work stuff going on right now, and so the time commitment for watching, you know, four different shows for the podcast is a lot. So if we can cut it down to Doki Doki, Glitter Force, and Delicious Party, I think that's... That's reasonable, but that'll be my plan moving forward. 
Absolutely. You are the producer and the boss. Beep Catherine boop. is right in everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shoot. I can't believe that I forgot to bring it up. I'm such a scatterbrain. So on YouTube, Cure Saul uh, commented on the ranking video. We got someone who told us that they have their own tastes. That's exciting. Yes. Thank they, you for leaving a comment, Cure Saul. They did not tell us that we had trash tastes, but there were a couple of key differences that I noticed. Uh, but, you know, let's just go through their Loved It season and kind of compare that to seasons that we really enjoyed. Absolutely. So Smile was their favorite, which kind of makes me excited for Smile. I don't know about Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, but then they also had Go Princess, Heart Catch, and Fresh, which were all in our Loved It tier. Absolutely. So I'm thinking maybe we'll like Smile more than we thought. I was a little worried because I heard it was so episodic. I was like, are Joel and I going to be cool with this? But mm. sounds like it's really well beloved. Okay, good. And I mean, it has a hot wolf man and a hot clown. So I, I just, I don't know what else you could want. And it birthed the hot clown conspiracy. Absolutely. I mean, maybe if instead of a hot wolf man, it was a hot chicken man, you know, who turned into chicken nuggets whenever there was a full, uh, the sun reached its apex at, at uh, midday. Oh, no. You know what I'm going to have to do? What? I'm going to have to draw Buggy in like the Precure style. Okay. So that he can be a part of the hot clown conspiracy. I, I think that's wonderful. I will say uh, also that uh, on their didn't like it, they had Star Twinkle and Tropical Rouge. Now, I understand why some people might not like Tropical Rouge. It was very episodic and and whatnot. But I did let them know that Star Twinkle was like my first season and it's, it's you know, in my heart. I didn't say it was my favorite, but, you know, I'd still give it a, a pretty high grade. Uh, and I wanted to know, like, if they had some thoughts on that and if they wanted to share. Uh, they did not get back to me. They said, if you want to know, I'll let you know. And it's like, yeah, that's why I'm asking. Come on, let me know. Tell us, tell us your thoughts. Tell us your takes. I'll tell them whether they're good or bad. And I'll blast you on the podcast. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we I, won't do that. No, if, if they have valid criticisms, I could say, you know, hey, I could definitely see that but uh yeah thank you so much for the comment we're not going to read every comment that we get ever but you know we were excited on the ranking video to see how everyone else uh, uh ranked theirs absolutely and we look forward to hearing more of your thoughts we don't want to get too far off the rails let's move on to the discussion question for this week did you have one that you are just hot roaring to go on or i have one prepared i wouldn't say hot roaring if that's the the threshold i have to cross <laughs> do you have one you're pretty excited for i mean we've done this one before but i like to do it again okay. because i think we can get some good discussions if you were going to do a pre-cure movie let's say you were going to do specifically a max heart movie what would your ideal plot be? Oh my, you can't just spring this on me. Okay, so the idea that I kind of got from watching the second Max Hart movie, which we'll be covering this episode, was the idea of what if the duo of magical girls kind of fell apart. And they went this particular way in, in the second movie, and I thought that was kind of interesting. But I also... I'm of two minds, because I feel like uh, Max Hart should really be more about Hikari and Poloon and maybe Laloon, and uh, I think that if there was a Futari Wa movie, that was the time when Nagisa and Honoka could shine. Or the first Max Hart movie, when, when she wasn't as close to maturation, I guess, like if that's what's happening. So I guess what I would do is I would find a way to split up the girls, but in a less... How do I say this? In the first movie, uh, Shiny Luminous, who's been shown to, like, never lose a battle, she just takes a missile to the face, and then she's out for the rest of the movie until the very end when she comes back. And, like, I don't want her to just be, like, written out that way. I want, like, I don't know, a, 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 a hole in space-time to show up, and she falls through with Paloon and Laloon, but Nagisa and Honoka can't follow because it closes up right behind her. So, like, they spend the movie kind of doing an A-plot and a B-plot, or, like, they switch back and forth between the scenes where they're both trying to reunite with each other, and along the way... Hikari learns some lessons. Maybe Polun and Laloon do some even more growing up and have some moments of character development for themselves. I would argue that we haven't gotten a lot of that for Laloon, really. Uh, and we've gotten some for Polun, but we could we could see more. And then uh, Nagisa and Honoka 
potentially their their kind of relationship could be a little frayed. I, I, we're like 80 episodes in at this point, so like it seems weird that they'd have a falling out, but maybe this tense situation causes them to freak out. One thing we know is that Nagisa is more laid back and Honoka is more by the numbers. So maybe Nagisa could be like, oh, don't worry, I'm sure we'll find Hikari. And Honoka could have like this like, you know, we have to find her child. She could be in danger somewhere. And then the finale would be the three of them reuniting and remembering what it is that they love about each other and unlocking their super final forms. Right, absolutely. Because what unlocks super final forms if not your love for your friends? Yeah, 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 yeah. And gay feelings and uh, new merchandise, of Abs- course. <laughs> new merchandise is very important. Also, this is too try hard for actual Precure to do. Do, but you could do a um, obsidian black and diamond white form for uh, Honika and Nagisa. Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. If if the black and white remakes come out in a couple of years and they're not called obsidian black and diamond white, I'm okay. going to be like, what's going on, Pokemon? They might not call it diamond white because there was already a diamond game, but maybe like marble white or something. Ooh, marble white. That's pretty good. Focus. Focus. <laughs> I like your idea of having Hikari kind of be the starring player. I think that's the right track. And she sort of was in the movie we watched, which we'll get into. Yeah. I think what I would do is I would have the villain for the movie do something that gave Nagisa and Honoka amnesia. So they oh. forgot about being freak here. And it wouldn't affect Hikari because she is special. Um, and technically not a pre-cure even. <laughs> she's yeah. not cure luminous. She's shiny luminous. Exactly. So they wouldn't even be friends because pre-cure is what brought the two of them together in the first mm. place. So I think the first part of the movie would be Hikari convincing them like, no, you two really are friends. Um, and maybe she would like find Meppel and Mipple and she would like wake them up somehow. And that would help wake up Nagisa and Honoka, and then the three of them would defeat the bad guy together. Okay, yeah, I really like that. It, I could... <laughs> this you, does... you could have a movie-only cute animal-slash-fairy like they like to do, mm-hmm. and it could be the whatever of of uh, memories, like cherished ah, memories. Okay, the secret 13th Hardiel who uh, gets absorbed later and everyone forgets that uh, she ever existed. <coughs> One of Kingdom Hearts' better ideas. Uh... Anyways, what's a Kingdom what, what is a Kingdom Hearts? Nobody knows. Sometimes it's a moon, but also it's not a moon. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but not like that first moon. But not like that first moon. Uh, yeah, I really like the the memory erasure. That's a good way of trying to show like what brings these two characters together. Because they transform by holding hands, you couldn't do it. But I would love a movie where they lose memories and they somehow like deep buried inside themselves. They remember how to transform and they look down. They're like, what, what is this? But they don't know how to fight and they don't know how to coordinate with each other. And they're like, you're just like me. You transform. No, I'm the, I'm the magical girl. You're not the magical girl. It's me. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. Oh man. This is just making me want to discuss the movie. So do we want to get into some succinct summaries? Absolutely. Let me just check my notes here. We have watched the second Max Hart movie. It has a subtitle. I don't remember what it is. We watched episodes 13 and 14 of Doki Doki and the corresponding Doki Doki episode 10, which was uh, corresponded to Doki Doki 13. I meant to say Glitter Force, Glo- Doki Doki 10. You know what I mean. And then we also watched the latest in Delicious Party Goodness, which was episode 24. In Delicious Party, episode 24, Kome Kome and not Mem Mem, Pam Pam have a bit of a falling out, which is quite unfortunate, and uh, they end up making up by the end of the episode, and then they defeat Narsatoru, and Narsatoru, egged on by Secretoru, actually enters the fight himself. His ponytail falls out. Turns out my boy's got a mullet. He's got like a side mullet. It, like, okay, let, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. But... They, yeah, they managed to actually kind of damage him a bit. Uh, he He's like, I'm playing to my strengths. And Amani's like, but I know your weaknesses. You're overconfident and like blast him point blank with a friendship laser beam. And that's what destroys the ribbon holding his hair. And he makes some ominous comments about like, next time I'll have to show them my true form. So this is absolutely a Zarbon situation from Dragon Ball Z. 
And uh, that's been your succinct summary for a delicious party. Uh, R- Ran and Yui continue to be uh, uh, head empty girls. They are struggling with their maths homework. Uh, they are doing uh, word problems, and they just don't get it. And every time uh, Kakone tries to help them, it turns out their heads are too empty, and they can't figure out how to implement Kakone's advice. So that, that's delicious party. Poor girls. Math is hard. <laughs> math is hard. I... I have a minor in mathematics. I took AP Calculus in high school, and I still don't remember exactly how to write out the equations for word problems because it, like they, they're not as common in my life or in my studies as they are in in, in media for for young kids who are making fun of it. You my know? teacher taught me the secret to word problems when I was a child. And so I always liked them more than regular math problems because, like, I've got ADHD, right? So I look at a sheet with formulas and symbols on it, and they just start floating. Mm. And I'm like, I don't know what is happening here. But with a word problem, it's words. And my teacher was like, go through and underline all the numbers. Mm. And then you just go from there. So I, I had an easier time with those in school than I did with, like, regular math. Yeah, absolutely. Different strengths for different folks. Different strengths for different thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. In the Max Hart movie, uh, we've kind of got two plots going on at the same time. Uh, all the girls are at a ski resort. Uh, Fuji P is there. Nagis is crushing on Fuji P. She can't snowboard. Honoka can ski really well. And she and Fuji P seem to be having a lot of fun. And some random girls are like, wow, don't they look so close? And Nagisa goes, they look close. Like Honoka is stealing my man that I've never made a move on. Even though she totally knows that Honoka wouldn't make a move on Fuji P. She's known him since childhood and would have asked him out if that was her interest. Yeah, she hasn't made any sort of effort. And Honoka is nosy. Yeah, Honoka's a bit nosy and a little, um... She doesn't read social situations. Like, she's very direct, and so she asks Nagisa about Fuji P when Fuji P potentially could have overheard them and it embarrasses Nagisa. So basically, this is one of those plots where two friends have a falling out, like it's the last 15 minutes of a Pixar movie, uh, but by the end of the movie, they will, in fact, make up. But... In the meantime, Hikari finds a mysterious egg. Is there a fairy <laughs> inside of this egg? No, it's just a chicken. But it's not just any chicken. It's, it's a hot the, chicken. It's, it's the hottest chicken you've ever seen. Hotter even than Blaziken. And uh, this chicken is actually the legendary Ho-Oh. That's right, you heard me. Ho-Oh, like from Pokemon. Uh, it's a phoenix. And if this chicken is allowed to mature into its final form, it will bring warmth and joy and life to the whole world. But if something were to happen to it, like say two reject JoJo villains made out of ice showed up and were to capture the the bird and maybe eat him off screen or something. Can't show that on screen, obviously. Uh, the world would fall into eternal snow. Oh, but they wouldn't do that to Hikari's friend, would they? They would do that to Hikari's friend. Oh no! So Hikari is trying to protect uh, uh, the the chicken whose name is Hinata, which is very funny because there's also an official cure much many seasons later named Hinata. Uh, The ice people can also freeze the warmth in people's hearts in order to make Nagisa and Hanukkah reenact uh, that end scene from um, uh, uh, Captain America Civil War. But eventually they remember that they love each other. Honoka teaches Nagisa how to snowboard, so that pays off. That's what we were really here waiting for. Uh, They fight the ice guys, and then they unlock a cool new form. They don't get names because they haven't nailed that part of the formula down yet, but I call it Phoenix form because it it was a gift from from Ho-Oh. And then they save the day. It briefly appears that uh, the chicken is dead, but Hikari wishes with the power of three-fourths of the hearty elves in order to bring the chicken back to life because apparently the queen's blessing bestows eternal life onto the creature that already has eternal life maybe yeah the okay so it's a phoenix yeah so it reincarnates and the elder for the the land land of clouds clouds was like we were going to the garden of light to get the blessing from the queen so this hoa will grow up big and strong into our next hoa so i guess that's just something they do every time so she gave it her blessing essentially yeah. and it it grew into its full hoa absolutely also and- it hates nagisa yeah, it, it didn't like Nagisa very much. Nagisa tried to give it a bunch of dumb names. Uh, but also, Hikari got to do a queenly thing, which is kind of nice. We don't see that a lot in the main series. That has been the Max Hart summary. Doki Doki. 
We have started a new arc. So this girl that we saw at the end of the last episode, Regina, she shows up and she kind of reminds me of like an LOL random girl on the internet. Like she shows up and she's all like, oh, yay, I'm beautiful. And they're like, what do you think about roses? She goes, oh, I hate roses. I'm beautiful. Give me your thing. Nah, just kidding. I'm going to destroy the world. So she is either Dopio and Diaboro from uh, JoJo's part five, Golden Wind, or she's the precure version of Harley Quinn. She's just she's just a stone cold bee. You know, okay. she she evades her taxes mm. like she and Laura could be Partners mirror in versions oh, of okay, one another. I see. You know, Laura was good, but if she had just been slightly evil, mm. she could have been Regina. Or the spawn of the devil, which we find out Regina is. I love Regina you, so much. You, you were making jokes about the boy, him being the Antichrist, but clearly Regina, because she's the daughter of King Selfish, as she, she... reveals to the generals. So we're introduced to Regina. Yes. Uh, but she only makes, like, a brief appearance, and then she goes to the mercenaries or the selfishes or whatever they're called, and she's like, hey, worship me, and they're like, sure. Um, (laughs) but- At first they're like, no, but then she's like, my daddy will be very upset with you, and they go, okay. Belle immediately starts simping. Marmo does not want to simp, but then she threatens to, like, incarcerate her or put her in carbonite or whatever, and so then she changes her tune. Ear is gone because he's the monster of the week this time. But- That's kind of all background noise. The real plot is that Makoto randomly remembers that the queen or the princess, whatever, uh, loves roses. And then the butler goes, speaking of which, here's a competition to discover the loveliest rose in the land. Completely out of the blue and completely related to this random epiphany that Makoto just had. And Makoto's like, oh, that happens to be the queen's favorite. Maybe we'll see her there. Absolutely. I love that Makoto thinks that she's just going to find the queen, like, She's under a rock. Somewhere. Yeah. Like, you don't think that she's trying to get back to her kingdom or whatever? Why would she be hanging out at a rose competition? She's like eight, babe. <laughs> she doesn't know how this works. We need to focus. Alice enters the competition. It turns out that there's another rich girl who really wants to win the competition, and she's, she sees herself as Alice's rival. This episode is a return to Alice's rage that she holds inside, and this other girl keeps trying to get her angry, which will cause her to lose the challenge. But she doesn't get angry no matter what happens, and she says that she's basically matured as a result of loving her friends and not wanting to lose them by going berserk and being sent to jail. For example, or maybe punching a hole through Mana's chest with like a powerful, you know, slam. I don't know. Girls just want to rampage. And then Marmo shows up and turns into, uh, she does her beast mode. And Alice shows that she is, in fact, super badass and defeats Marmo. And it's probably the coolest Doki Doki fight. And uh, then the rose that she wins at the end of the competition turns into a gem. And we don't know what that is until the next episode when Makoto or maybe one of the fairies says like, oh, there's like five of these gems and they're in the opening. So, you know, it's important. And Dobby explains it. OK, it was Dobby. They say something miraculous will happen if you gather all five. And this one was yellow and Alice won it. This episode's about Rika. I wonder how it will end. Rika uh, wants to be a doctor or wants to be yeah wants to be a doctor in the future she would be a doctor and to do that she needs the highest grades but on these last uh like the semester grades or whatever she was number two not number one and everyone's like oh gosh what happened and it turns out she has gotten addicted to smack no she's gotten addicted to uh a game it's it's japanese specific but basically it's like a memorization speed game and uh, she's gotten really into it and the girls decide to help her through this because you know being a doctor is important but there's a, a a competition coming up where she can fight the queen of of this game and uh so that's what the episode's about Makoto's like a queen yeah a queen what could my it be? queen liked this game yeah absolutely and at the end of the episode Rika finds out that she's still you know she's young she's like eight so her mom's like please go out and enjoy as many things as you want I support you you don't have to be a doctor and the dad in the background goes maybe you could be a photographer and everyone goes get out of your dad and then go back to traveling the world ugly <laughs> and, then, and then the queen of this game should have written it down gives Makoto a special deck of cards which starts glowing and produces a blue gem hmm Interesting that we usually would get a mid-season care right around now, and there's five gems with only four girls. I wonder what it could mean. And those have been your succinct summaries! Ah, That was great. Thank you. You're welcome. You want to talk about the movie first, it sounds like? Yeah, I think I'm good to talk about the movie. 
This might be my favorite standalone Precure movie that we've seen okay. so far. Um, which we also said last time we we watched a movie. I think that was an All Stars movie though, so that was my favorite All Stars movie. Okay, but especially for for early Precure. I just felt like the plot to this one was a little less contrived than mm. some of the other movies we've seen, and the pacing was reasonable. So, you know, we get introduced to kind of the central conflict for the movie. Honoka and Nagisa aren't seeing eye to eye, and they're not sure how to apologize. And Hikari has an egg. Right. We get introduced to the plot device, egg. Um, we get introduced to the villains, and like, it all just kind of flows very well also, it was a cute, just a cute fairy, little little hot baby, <laughs> little baby <laughs> chick. Uh, I do appreciate, and this is just kind of like due to pacing in the movie. But the, Hikari meets this baby chicken, and then like thirty minutes later, the bad guys have shown up and are wrecking. Like thirty minutes in the actual canon, not thirty minutes real world time. But when the chicken gets captured, Hikari is like, "We saw you trying so hard to fly for all of two minutes before the plot started." <laughs> that was, I liked that. But no, uh, Hinata had some personality. It had a cute design. Uh, like you said, nothing really... Well, most of it didn't really feel forced. It felt like a pretty comfortable pace. Again, we're kind of far into the se- into the series for these two girls to have a falling out. But it is kind of one of the most interesting ideas you could ask. What if this magical girl duo that rely on each other to transform had a falling out? I kind of thought that maybe we'd have an, a scene where they'd hold hands and they'd transform, but it wouldn't work. Uh, or they transform and like uh, uh, Hikari is or Hikari Honoka is missing like her left shoulder pad or something. She's like, where'd that? Where'd it go? <laughs> and Mipple could be like, you didn't fully transform. Were you not holding Nagisa's hand hard enough? Your hearts weren't in sync. Yeah. Well, and um, this movie, like you mentioned, it had a fight between Honoka and Nagisa. Now, anybody who's been listening to the podcast for a while knows we have been wanting a precure versus precure scene in a movie. Like we mm. thought that would be a great idea. And because we started later in the series, we saw a lot of the later movies first. What we have now learned, thanks to Magical Girl AU, is that this fight in this movie was so traumatic for children in the theater that Toei never did it again. So yeah. Toei will not have Precure fighting Precure because children were like sobbing and having meltdowns. Absolutely. That said, there were uh, there are a couple movies that kind of toy with it a little bit. Uh, the Go Princess Witchy movie, I can't it's not just them, but one of the All Stars movies has a bit of like a miscommunication. Oh, that was the that was the All Stars movie that took place during the Kira Kira season. Uh, it had a bit of misunderstanding between the Maho girls and uh, Haruka, and then it had a misunderstanding between Akira and um, uh, y- Yakira. No, ya- um, the Aki- girl, the girl who was always getting kidnapped. No, 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 no. There was Akira, and who's the purple one? Oh, Yumiko. Yukari. Yukari. Yukari and Akira. How did I forget her name? Those two had a misunderstanding with Yui, which caused, you know, an argument with, uh, I'm getting the names mixed up, but you get what I'm saying. But they didn't fight each other. Yeah, it wasn't a physical fight. And, uh, when I heard that, you know, kids got upset because their just two best friends, the Precure, were fighting each other, I kind of thought to myself, yeah, they probably fight for a bit and then they remember their friendship and they get over it. They break out of the mind control. But it actually was quite harrowing it was like they were just beating the crap out of each other and so i understand why it did upset children i'd still love a season where maybe like somehow the bad guy like like when the the delicious party girls see the kira kira girls the kira kira girls are somehow shrouded in shadow and when the kira kira girls see the delicious party girls they're shrouded in shadow and it's only near the end of the movie that they realize but maybe it could be more like a cat and mouse type game instead of like a let's beat the shit out of each other scene i i watch too much shonen anime so i kind of do want it to be an actual fight you know one of the famous marvel dc crossovers is superman versus spider-man mm. where their villains kidnapped each other's uh, girlfriends and, and then said it was the other one yeah, yeah absolutely um so superman and spider-man thought fought that's the kind of thing i want you know uh have have two of the season's villains team up and kidnap the girls fairies and and make them fight each other but i get that i am not the target demographic for this show mm. and if i really want that i can just go watch the luffy Usopp fight <laughs> that's kind of what i'm after <laughs> 
Uh, you know, in fan canon exists, you know, if we ever become multimillionaires, we could hire a team of animators to make something that, uh is legally distinct from Precure, but, you know, it's still pretty close to, uh... It's pretty close? Look at this, it's a, uh... Pretty... <laughs> That's what we could call it, pretty close. Pretty... <laughs> I love it. This is a strawberry uh, bunny girl, but her name is, uh, Nichiga. <laughs> <laughs> Ichigo is just the word for strawberry, right? Yes. Okay, and she was Ichika, so we could just be like, strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I do also want to say, I mentioned this, Friesen and Frozen, who are the bad guy duo, uh, they are just absolute JoJo's villains. The they have abs, muscles. they have poses, uh, shapely buttocks. I just, see, I was gonna, I thought you were going to call me out for being cursed, but I was going to point out their butts were square. It's James is the one who pointed butts. that out, that one welder guy in our Discord when we were watching it. But mm -hmm. no, well, we just, all noticed. We, we were all looking. It, it, it absolutely. Possibly not respectfully. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I don't like villains who have the same power. I get it that they're supposed to be like twins and they're supposed to be really in sync, and near the end of the movie they fall out, and that proves that Nagisa and Honoka have us have the stronger friendship. But I guess I'm more used to there being an ice and a fire villain, and I think i would prefer that but at the same time what would the fire guy want from from the phoenix bird so maybe the phoenix keeps the warmth of the worlds in balance ah uh, and he just wants to burn it all so it could be like the heat miser and snow miser type of thing but pre-cure exactly see. yeah um, but yeah, they're the, the scene when they got their Phoenix powers and were fighting was so well choreographed. Oh, it was so good. Like I said, I really liked this movie. I think yep. it was probably visually the best we've seen of Max Hart too. Oh yeah. I, I would absolutely agree with that. You said that this was your favorite standalone movie and I can't remember every standalone movie. I would rank this high, but I don't know if it beats, uh, the Mario Party of the Fresh Solo movie and uh, oh, you're right. The uh, fresh solo Momozona so love doing good. the karate to beat the. Uh... <laughs> here's here's the thing, right? Um, you've talked before about that one video about art being subjective. Oh yeah, yeah. When you're looking at movies, right? There is this is a good movie. Mm. And there's this is an enjoyable movie. Absolutely. And some things are good and enjoyable. I think from a technical standpoint and from a writing standpoint, this was probably a better movie than the Fresh movie, but I would say I enjoyed the Fresh movie more. Mm, so, yeah, okay, I could agree with that. And like you said, you know, things fall out of our brains pretty quickly because our brains are basically colanders. So the next time I see a standalone movie, I'll probably be on mic going, you know, this was probably the best movie. And you'll be like, what about that other one? And I'll be like, oh, we did watch that, didn't we? <laughs> we, maybe, maybe what we could do is we could do a marathon. Like we Pick one week after we've caught up on all pre here seasons. We're only covering the latest. We'll just have a week where we watch like two movies a night or something and, and do a go. note by note comparison. That said, would you like to cover Delicious Party or Doki you, Doki next? I like that there was a long pause. Like we have, you know, a bunch of options. Uh, no, Doki Doki's next on the scratch pad. So let's go into Doki Doki. What did you think of these episodes? Holy crap. Alice is so cool. And Rika is cool. Like... Usually there's like a cure I can single out as like, I don't like them as much. In Fresh, it was Miki. No, no dislike to Miki. She just didn't have a lot of episodes. And uh, so she didn't have time to like develop. But Rick is amazing. Uh, Alice is amazing. I think that a strength of this season for sure is that they really do a good job balancing their attention between the different cures. I'd say so. Mana hasn't gotten quite as much growth because she's the pink and so she's better than everybody else, but I'm sure it is coming. Yeah. Well, and something else that I noticed during these episodes, and I've noticed it a couple of times, I distinctly remember like episode two or so of, of Doki Doki. It might have been in the cut material that didn't make it into Glitter Force, but... There was an episode where Mana seemed kind of down, and one of the other students said, good, I'm glad she got knocked down a peg. And that, that stood out to me, because every time we've seen her before or since, everyone has marveled about how amazing Mana is and how great she is. Um, or like she was called bossy in Alice's uh, backstory episode from way back in the day. So like, I think there's... You know, they say that sometimes people hide their sadness behind a smile or whatever. And Mana does seem to be a pure energy bun, but I could see her having a despair moment when she is like, oh my gosh, 
people think I'm annoying and they don't think that I'm helpful. Am I too much for people? Yeah, exactly. absolutely. But no, um, in the Marmo turns into a giant plant episode and Alice, uh, turn, you know, has her moment to shine. The other three girls get captured and Marmo's like, you can't attack me because I have thorns, except she doesn't have thorns on one of her Sims, which seems like an oversight. But, uh, uh, Rosetta does this like karate, like, palm slam attack that is so powerful that it causes Marvel to like release the other girls. It was so cool. It was awesome. One small criticism I have of this episode. So we are told when we meet Alice that she has a rage problem. Yeah. Right. And we're shown a scene when she is like six years old, like Mm. several years ago where this rage problem caused problems for her at school. But as far as we can tell, she had that one incident Her grandpa said, hey, use your martial arts for good, not for evil. And she's never had an incident since. So Mm. it's really odd to me that she still has a reputation for having a short temper. And I would have liked to see more of her short temper leading up to this episode. That would be good. uh, Or additional flashbacks or something. Uh, That would, yes. I think the implication from the last episode was that she's kind of removed herself a bit from society. So, like, she doesn't go to social functions where there's large groups of people because she might lose it and kill 13 people or whatever the case may be. So maybe this girl hasn't seen her since she was, like, six. Yeah, exactly. Maybe. that that That's the only way that it really jives. But I think that you're right that a little bit more evidence of that would be good. Could you imagine if they had a precure from one of the seasons who was, like, straight up, um, what are they called? Berserkers? No, the like the Bat Girls or whatever. Like oh, the, uh, yes, yes, yes. The um, Sukabon. Sukabon. Yeah, if there was a Sukabon girl who slowly learned to be a little bit more delicate over the season. Well, and I really thought that was the direction they were going to go with Cure Flamingo last oh, yeah, yeah, season, yeah, yeah. and they kind of let go of that after her intro. But like, she had the long skirt and she beat up the boys when she first showed yeah. up. So well, and I think. There's a, there, you know, I think that uh, the the Precure direct, like Toei, probably is a little cautious because it is for a younger audience and uh, you don't want to encourage certain types of behavior or whatever, but eh, it would be an interesting uh, character exercise. I also like that the every time these girls try to defeat uh, Alice with some trick, she's able to turn it back on them, except for one, when Mana's heel breaks. At that point, Mana has to step in because I don't think there's anything that Alice could have done to fix it, where Mana snaps her other heel and she's like, check it out. Uh, but, you know, they try to splash some um, paint on a, a painting of a rose that she was doing and she turns into like a Pollock-esque kind of abstract or whatever and it looks even better. Um, there's a cat sleeping on the piano, so you can't play the keys without waking it up, but Alice only plays the notes that aren't being slept on by the cat and uh, manages to still write a beautiful symphony for it. The girls looked amazing in their dresses. I thought that was a really nice uh, a scene. So yeah, just overall... Really positive about this episode. Rick's smack addiction was great. It was wonderful. It's funny. You keep calling it a smack addiction. That's how you play. You smack the cards. Yeah, absolutely. Joel and I often, we we, like most people our age, had a love affair with the Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged series when we were younger. And so every time we watch an anime, we have a moment where we're like, if we were doing an abridged of this, we would do this. And I looked at Joel and I was like, if we were abridging this she would be addicted to playing Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> like, that's what she would be playing here. <laughs> or Magic the Gathering she's spending all her money on. Oh Magic my gosh. <laughs> um, but no, like, she's she's really into this game, but she feels like it would disappoint people if they knew how much time she was taking away from her studies and her goals if they knew. So she keeps it to herself. But everybody is really positive about it. Mm. And I love that she and Raquel have been practicing in secret together. Yes. I do also want to point out, I think I've made this clear indirectly, but to state it directly, I love when the monster of the week is not just like punch it. And I know a lot of monsters, you know, oh, this one has a shield, so we have to find a way to get around the shield. Or, oh, this one can split into two parts, so we have to find a way to capture the two parts. But at the end of the day, 95% or so, like a lot of them are just, let's see if we can punch and hit it with a friendship laser beam. But sometimes it's a baseball monster and they have to beat it in a game of baseball. They have to score a home run in order to defeat it. It's a soccer monster and they have to score a soccer goal. So the 
um, 100 poems game, whatever it's called, like something like that. Uh, the monster, you have to beat it by winning the game. And so like, uh, Mana gets one wrong because I guess it started with the right syllable, but it wasn't the correct verse of the poem they're selecting. And so she gets hit when she gets the wrong one and Rick tries to go for the correct one, but the monster covers it up. She goes, that's cheating. And the, the monster goes, it's a perfectly legitimate technique, which is, you know, what all like young children say when they cheat and just like, that was a good monster fight. I really liked it. It was fantastic. This is my favorite monster fight so far this season, I mm, think. I really liked baseball monster and soccer monster when they were depressed when they got defeated. We didn't talk about that in that episode, but... Absolutely. I want to learn how to play this game. Mm. Like, it, Rika's passion for it made me go, oh, that does seem like it could be kind of fun. Yes, passion can be infectious. Absolutely. Um, I could imagine you being like, Catherine, you're cheating because I read so fast. Oh, you're not cheating. You're just better adapted to it. You know, <laughs> you just get to play in your own league with other, you know, superhumans. I was going to say freaks, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> you're so mean. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of all my doki doki thoughts. Did you have anything specific from the Glitter Force version that you wanted to shout out? I did. I will say you pointed out why they might have cut the episodes that they cut out, but I think that it's really interesting. They cut Rika's episode when she was trying to figure out Mana's secret about being a pre-cure. And then they changed her relationship with Mana from wife to mother. And then they also cut this episode, the card flipping episode. And there's a couple of different reasons that I think it was. The game is uh, too Japanese. It's, it's very Japanese. Yeah, there's that. But then you also pointed out that this episode and then the episode, this is 14, so it would be episode 12, were both cut. And those are both episodes in which Ira goes beast mode and is defeated. And Ira is coded as a younger kid, so maybe they're trying to not show the Precure beating up a kid, even though he's a kid of pure evil or whatever. And But then there's also the possibility that, like, maybe the Glitter Force people just hate Rika. <laughs> you know, maybe there's, like, ugh, a Rika solo episode? Who cares? Yuck. No thanks. <laughs> oh, man. If you were given unlimited control over a Precure season, would you just, like, cut the episodes for your least God, could character? you imagine if we did a delicious party cut? Or, sorry, I'm getting my seasons mixed up. A Tropical Rouge cut where there were just no episodes of Papaya. No mention of Papaya. She's, She's not just... even in the episode. We magic eraser her out of all the background shots. Uh, but you wrote a completely normal story for High School Girls. <laughs> I can't remember any other specific, uh, like, um, smart-ass comments that people were making or anything like that. Uh, we failed to write it down, but they the scene where Alice is being kind of cornered by the, the rich girl and as they're playing tennis... We liked the writing better in the original. Oh, Something about yeah. The way she okay, so it. so uh, yeah, these girl, the 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 rich girl and her friends have been tormenting Alice and her friends this entire time. So in the final match, whoever wins this tennis match will become the Golden Rose or whatever the case may be. One of her friends, one of her cronies, is shining a light in Alice's eyes to try to distract her from playing. So the other girls run towards her to, like, snatch the mirror out of her hand or whatever so she can't distract Alice. And then the other cronies dump a bunch of mud on the girls. Because this entire time, uh, the, the rich girl has been saying, oh, your friends are a bunch of monkeys and or bumpkins in the American version. And I just gotta say racist but uh anyways it's, no. <laughs> it's racist against chimpanzees okay they are they're wise and intelligent creatures oh no maybe they stop. fling their own poo but no. but that doesn't make them any let's get back to the episode in the in the japanese version alice says something like or the, the rich girl says something like, why aren't you losing your cool? Why do you care for them? They're just, they're mud. They're covered in mud. They're ugly and gross. And uh, Alice says something like, to me, they shine as brightly as diamonds. And it shows them and there's like a little like halo light effect around them, even though they're in ruined clothes. But also they don't normally dress in ruined clothes. Normally they seem quite stylish as far as I can tell. But anyways. They're just not rich. Yeah, like, absolutely. Poor people. This are is just class yucky. warfare in our <laughs> 
creek here. <laughs> no, the uh, the previous statement is not the official stance of the Cure of the What Now podcast. It is simply a statement of... Oh, yeah, it's about the characters. Yeah. That's, that's what the characters think. Exactly. Okay, but I think that's about everything from Doki Doki. Yeah, I would say I'm ready to move on to... Oh, no, sorry, Regina. How long until she gets turned good? And also, how long until she does something other than to show up and kind of vaguely allude to being evil bold of you to assume she turns good now she is the daughter of king selfish so maybe what if she's, she's lying. Just born to be bad what if she's lying oh. here's here's my thought she shows up she says i'm the daughter of king selfish and the other three go no way and but then they start like following her anyway because she's threatening them with daddy's wrath but what if she's just a rich girl with magic powers a spoiled girl with magic powers who just wants three servants so she found these three and she's gonna threaten them however she's she can. just confident <laughs> Yeah. So they fell for it. <laughs> she rolls 20 on all of her persuasion. That could actually be it. I would love it if that were the case. So I guess I guess we'll find out. Now, normally, I would suspect her of potentially being a mid-season cure, because True. that kind of seems to be the pattern in pre-cure, right? The... Mm the bad girl shows up she and the main cure form a friendship and at first she's like no i don't want to be your friend and the main cure is like yes you do we're gonna hold hands also consider uh when dobby was explaining the five gems there was a pink one a purple one a yellow one and a blue one no guesses for which of the pre cure are going to get that the last one was red and regina is blonde, but her tights and her bow are red so if she were to become a cure i could totally see red being her color so that's just, that's where we are with Regina. Mm. I just, you know, if you've been listening to this show, that I am a sucker for the Hemadere archetype. Mm. Here she is. Here she like, is. Please. I, I Here's my psychoanalysis of myself. Mm. I have always been, like, the caretaker of people. And I think there's a part of me that just wants to be a stone cold bitch and get oh, away with it. Okay. And so I see characters like this and I'm like, yes, you're living my dream. My ideal self. Uh, I will say at the beginning of the Rose competition episode, she shows up to introduce herself to Mana and seems to like really genuinely like Mana. So who knows if that's an act or not? Like who's her, who's the real version? But when they say something about like, oh, do you like roses? She goes, I hate them because they're more beautiful than I am. Or I don't like anything that even... Nothing should be Nothing more should compare to my beauty. And then she snaps and a bunch of roses wilts. And then she just walks off. And the other four girls don't notice that she's clearly f***ing <laughs> magic. She clearly has a life-draining ability. Transform into a precure and apprehend this criminal. Now consider this. Yes. They were distracted by her... You can trade me your gem for the fate of the world. For the fate of the world. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go burn down a police station. Again, this is what Regina is planning to do. <laughs> now what we at Killer of the What Now Yum are going to endorse. Absolutely. Delicious party. It is an episode. It exists. It's a pretty cute episode. So they were doing math. Okay, this was the tumultuous pizza party. Tumultuous pizza party. I have a complaint. Yes. The pizza party really wasn't the tumultuous part of the episode. The pizza party was fine. There yep. was no tumult. I, I, we've commented on this before, and it's going to probably continue to be a thing. They just want to put the actual plot in the first sentence of the two, of the sub, of the title. And then the subtitle is just, oh yeah, and by the way, here's the food we're going to be focusing on. So like, it could literally just be, who cares about Kome Kome? Pizza! <laughs> Would you communicate the same amount of information? I would have been fine with that, yeah. <laughs> um, did you did you find the conflict between Pam Pam and Kome Kome believable? Yes. So Kome Kome's through line seems to be that she's growing as a person, and, you know, she's... Children try their best, but sometimes they can be snotty little brats. And so Kame Kame wanting to, like, dictate what game they play, and she wants to play, she wants to always be, you know, the fir or the person to choose who plays who in house. Dr. House MD, obviously she wants to be Dr. Lisa Cuddy and run the hospital, whereas Pam Pam is uh, Dr. Cameron because, you know, she's a little bit of a bee and kind of, you know, uptight. But, uh... It makes sense, and we saw that Pam Pam was haughty, so it makes sense that they kind of got into a fight. It's also very convenient that Pam Pam runs away and happens to get captured by Narsatoru in, like, the three seconds she's not with the other cures. Uh, just 
you know, good reason to skulk in the bathroom instead of running off to join the circus, you know? Bad things happen when you run off to join the circus. Uh, but I just, overall, it was kind of a nothing burger of an episode. We're getting more growth for Kome Kome, but not anything, I would say, overly significant. Just sometimes, just like a, sometimes friends fight, but then we make up, and like, that's okay. She can speak as a fox now. She can. Yeah, absolutely. I just, I feel like it's interesting that she can take human form, but the other fairies can't, which makes me think that the other fairies can, and they just don't feel like it. So I'm very much looking forward to their human forms. Oh yeah, absolutely. It'll be like, uh, if anyone's ever seen Steven Universe, they introduce this concept of uh, fusion, which is like when two characters get really close, they have the ability to transform into a fused form together. Uh, But then by the end of the series, there were a couple of characters that didn't get fusions together and so in the last episode they're like quick just get them all out of the way and so we're gonna have like 30 episodes of Kome Kome learning to transform and being a person and growing closer to Yui and then the other two are just going to learn how to become human off screen and they're gonna show up and save the day in episode 43 absolutely oh man so I have to talk about the darkness in this episode okay Narsator's mullet. Now, <laughs> I understand you you thought it was kind of a side mullet. You are mistaken. His hair was over his shoulder when you commented that. But when his hair was just down and back, it was super long in the back. And then he had like short, regular man hair in the front. He has a mullet. He was so attractive before I knew this. And now... Now what am I supposed to do? I don't know, man. Where's my hot evil guy? I just have Belle and Doki Doki. That's all I'm left with. <laughs> there are plenty of hot evil guys out in the hot evil guy scene. The hot evil guy scene. The right evil guy is out there for you. You just need to be patient. Is there a is there a separate C for the hot chickens <laughs> for you? <laughs> There's only one hot chicken. Uh, his name is Hinata or her name. Do you? What was your read on Hinata? Boy or girl? Do you know? Girl. Okay. They used she pronouns through the movie, so. I don't even remember. I mean, it's a it's a legendary bird, so does it even have a gender? Ho-Oh in the games doesn't have a gender. I'm pretty sure it does. Legendary Pokemon don't have gender. Really? Okay, anyways. Um, but uh, I think there's only Hinata. And there's none other that can replace Hinata. And also, Hinata is up in the sky right now, spreading warmth and love to all the people. But it's okay. I'm willing to share Hinata with anyone else who desires that warmth. (laughs) Well, good. So we got some uh, Doki Doki love letters from that one welder guy, James, and the Discord. Max Hart movie number two. It's a great movie. League's better than the frog one. When we were watching the second movie, I turned to Catherine and I said... What was the first one about? Because it was the one with the frogs here. And I go, oh, yeah, frogs. That's right. Wasn't one of them voiced by Zorro or something? <laughs> Maybe. I can't even remember. Uh, good fights, good villains, JoJo characters, and overall, it was intense. We mentioned earlier in the episode that we thought they looked like JoJo villains. James and I, while we were watching the movie live in the Discord, commented on that at the exact same time. Absolutely. In Doki Doki, the Rose competition was great, even with all the cheating. And personally, I think that in a competition like this, the cheating makes things more interesting. Not if you're participating. It's unfair to Alice and them. But as an episodic plot, it makes more sense. What is the true mark of a lady of nobility? I think it is the ability to do what it takes to win and not get caught. Yeah, that's capitalism, baby. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Do you know what capitalism is? I'm starting to think you don't know what it is. James also said the fight with the card game was awesome. Yes. Like we said, we really liked that monster of the week. Or when Rika did uh, her little like um, fake out. That's the word for it. She like flipped over the card monster and then it like slammed into the wall in order for her to land on the correct one. That was pretty cool. Absolutely. Okay. He also seemed to really like Delicious Party 24. He really, really liked the math problems. And when I say really liked, I mean, he clearly has some trauma that he carries in his heart. And this episode healed some of that trauma. Uh, He never really laid so hard with someone before on math problems. He hated it uh, as a a child, and it's just like, who buys 100 watermelons, you know? Fred bought 100 watermelons. The store had 260 watermelons. How many watermelons are left? Fred, what are you doing? Are you running an underground illegal watermelon operation? Yeah, we didn't go into this, but the girls decided to make up their own narratives um, to, to do the word problem, but they got distracted by making the story make narrative sense instead of putting 
the numbers in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's because if you have a small number of brain cells, you can take a problem and you can translate it into something that makes more sense and then solve it from there. But if you have no brain cells, you can't even do that. You're just asking yourself, like, why would I leave my purse at home? It's always in the same place. Oh, you were eating snacks, Ran. Why wouldn't, Why can't I eat snacks? Because you're going to get snacks at the other place. Why is you eating snacks? Why is you eating Oh, it was so good. Are you imagining Ran being disappointed in her because she took too long at home? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. So James had a thought here, and I don't really remember what this is referring to, but he said, you know, Narsatoru is stronger than we thought. True. I liked that Narsatoru actually got to participate in the battle this episode. But then he says, and Amane tried to put a cap in his ass. What? <laughs> that was when she shot the laser beam at him, point oh. blank, when she's like, your problem is you're too cocky, and she shoves the paracel or whatever it is in his face and pulls the trigger. Her heart juicy mixer or whatever. <laughs> this, Absolutely. The merchandise for this season is weird. I'm just going to throw that out. Eventually, we're just going to get full pre-cure mechas. No. Get in the, uh, get in the, uh, the noodle suit, uh, Ron. <laughs> Ran. <laughs> Do it or Yui will have to get in the... Yui has to do it again? (laughs) Oh man, this last thought made me laugh out loud when I read it. But instead of paying the precure, Mari did what every corporate manager does and held a pizza party. And I would contend that yes, he did what every manager does. That's capitalism, baby. But uh, I would contend that because Mari is from the Koo Kingdom, they probably don't have a concept of money. So the pizza party was him just throwing dollar bills into the air for the girls to collect, and they ate it, those ungrateful girls. What the heck? (laughs) They they didn't properly appreciate. (laughs) Yes, that she could have used that as a down payment on a house, but instead she's just (laughs) eating it. Oh, man, can you imagine what avocado toast must be in the kingdom? <laughs> Absolutely. Instead of buying off, av- instead of enjoying avocado toast, these uh, millennials in the Koo kingdom are buying houses for some reason. Um, also, Kome Kome did in fact get taller again. While you and I were watching this episode, we commented like the opening only shows like three forms of development for her in her human form. And we've seen all three in the show. Guess she's done grow. Oh, nope. There it comes. She grew again. <laughs> so who knows? Maybe by the end of the series, she'll just be like a 30 foot tall woman that just like stands over. Uh... She's going to be Yui's grandma brought back to life. <laughs> I'm just saying she's that's that's where we're going. AU had a thought that didn't make it into our scratch pad, but I'll shout it out real quick. They translated word problems in the episode as story problems. And AU was like, I don't know why that translation was so janky. She didn't say janky. I said janky. But I don't know. I heard them called story problems in school when I was a kid. Like, I feel like story problems and word problems can be used interchangeably. I was curious what your thoughts were on that. Uh, I mean, I don't know. When when she said it, I thought, huh, okay. That makes sense, and I think that she's right that I've heard them refer to as word problems over story problems. Um, but I think now that you mention it, I, I don't know. I don't know. I can't even remember what I had for breakfast like an hour ago before we started this podcast, so don't ask me what they were called when I was doing them in sixth grade or whatever. Fair enough. Moving on to our Looking Ahead segment, they finally did an episode title that isn't weird, Like right? There's yeah. not like the plot and then food. So the name of this title is A New Phantom Thief, Nico Nico Campground. And Google Translate tells me Nico Nico translates to smilingly. Interesting. So campground... I this is this is probably my own headcanon and this is my own biases because I love this trope but I think that Narsatoru is going to open a hole in the ground and they're going to be transported to an evil amusement park <laughs> and they have to like escape in order to uh, fight him properly <laughs> now I love this and I want this to happen but I would very much like to know where you got amusement park from campground well it, because it's a smiling campground? I don't know. So do you think they're going on a camping trip and that's when Narsatara is going to attack? Yeah, and they'll do like the Japanese camping grills that we've seen in other seasons. Okay, And, fair and I don't think it will. Well, so I think Narsatara is going to attack early in the season or episode. I think he'll be taken out and this new general will. Mm. Or, so Narsatoru said something like, you know, oh, I wanted to play with my toys a little bit longer. He, he He's getting ready for like his final attack. So maybe... He has 
an underground lair with like four experimental monsters that are way more powerful than typical Ubazows, and he's going to release those, so maybe that's what attacks them. Or, and again, this might be my own kind of headcanon, what if he has a second personality? What if like he presses a button on the back of his left earlobe or something and he transforms into like this weird muscular creature that is a different new general, but is like, it's still him. Does that make sense? That would be interesting. I also wonder if because the Precure have never met Secretaru, if it's just going to be her. Oh yeah, maybe. Because she would be new to them. And I like the idea of her showing up and just very calmly like destroying them. Yes, absolutely. Uh, She seems to have all of her ducks in a row. And if she is, in fact, uh, a secretary, even though her name refers to secret, maybe it's a double pun or double entendre. Um, She probably takes a lot of data from all of the previous fights. So it would be great if she showed up. And if Yui's like, time for my 1000 calorie punch. And she's like, you actually slightly miss every time. So if I just lean this far away, the punch will miss. And he was like, ah, and she just like falls into the river or something. (laughs) That would be delightful. And that has been your do 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 final thought. Outro goes here. Thanks for listening, everyone. And don't forget to have some fried chicken. Yum, yum. Mullets are not acceptable in a professional setting. That's capitalism, baby. What do you think it is? (laughs) Thank you all for joining us for another delicious plateful of... Killer of the what now? Please take a moment to rate and review wherever you get your podcasts from. Or if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to leave a comment, a like, or lick that subscribe bell so you know when the new episodes are going up. Did you just say lick it? Well, yeah, we're we're making delicious foods. It's a delicious party. Uh, anyway, you can find me on Twitter at Pirate Ghost Host. Please don't lick me. Can you even lick a ghost? <laughs> I'm on Twitter at Cotwin underscore pod. K-O-T-W-N underscore pod. Absolutely. And as always, the Discord link is in the Twitter bio and also in the YouTube description. Come join us for weekly discussions streams, and all of the pre-cure your heart can handle. Thanks for listening, everyone. Yum. Or no, I'm full!